Hi there, it's Donna and Rhonda from Heart of the Matter Professional Organizing, and we are gearing up. It's time for back to school, and with back to school comes paper. Major paper. We work on this a lot with our clients in their homes, but tell us, Rhonda, what do you do? What works with your girls and in your household? Well, the funny thing is we started this job really kind of before my kids were in school and people would talk about the paper that comes home from school and I really didn't please them until, wow, like a lot of paper comes home. I know they're moving more toward having things automated yeah. now and yeah. email and all that, but we still are inundated with paper. Yeah. So we see this over and over with our clients that this is something that we have to deal with. Yeah. So coming up with a system for my family in particular, this is the island, this is the kitchen, this is yeah. where it ends up happening. Another way it comes. Yeah. And you know when you go for supper preparation and there's papers all over the place, you have to come up with a system. So the system that I've been using that seems to be working, I, it's not perfect, but what I've been using for many years yeah. is that I simply have a basket like this sitting on the island. I find that the island in most homes and in mine end up being the dumping ground. Yeah. So if I have a basket sitting out, that at least helps. The cool thing is when it's in a basket, again, it has the boundary, it's contained. Yeah. And then when company comes or supper preparation, I grab it and then I actually have a spot over there on top of the speaker okay. that it just slides in there and then it looks like a decorative basket. It can be heaping full, yeah. but when company comes, they can't see in the basket. Okay. So okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. like having a, a handy drawer in my island that if all of a sudden, you know, I need to clear something off, I do have a drawer that I can put some things in, but generally speaking, the kids know to put their paper in here, mm -hmm. and then I know where it is. When so it's they come home from school, a kind of a rule, a yes. family rule, routine. Right? You, you empty your uh, backpack. backpack. They yeah. set them over there. They bring their lunches. They put their lunch containers in the sink, and they put whatever papers I need to look at okay. or they need to deal with in the basket. And then when, usually after supper, or if I'm home a little earlier from work, then I can go through the basket and see what there is. Right. So there's different things there. There's some things that you have to deal with and go back to school the next day. Yeah. There is something you might want to keep long term. You as mom or you as yes. one of the girls want to keep long term. Or there's something just more personal for them that you don't necessarily care about, but they need to find a home for. So let's talk about those two other categories of yes. paper. Whatever you want to talk about. Yep. First. So um, things that I want to keep longer term, yeah. but I don't have the luxury to run to my filing cabinet. Mm -hmm. I put in my hot file which okay. I have tucked here beside the fridge. That's my to-do, that's to-be-filed, that's mementos. That's just, again, a holding spot until I can really put it in its Okay, so that's home. not its ever, forever home. No, okay. that's just yeah. temporary, that, as this is. Yeah. And, and too many of us have a system where we have an ultimate home, but then we never get it there, and that's where it breaks down. So sometimes we have to have those intermediate yeah, steps until we actually have the time and the luxury to put them away. Okay. So that those are those things. And then to be honest, I do um, designate things on steps. I usually put uh, have a Selena step, a Jada step, and a Kristen okay. step. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jason doesn't necessarily like that. We have to be careful that it because it doesn't become a tripping hazard. That's how I like to do it. If I find things that I know the girls want to keep, I put them on the steps, and they're pretty. It's pretty routine. As they go up, they see on their step. Yeah. That's my step. They grab it and take it to their room. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's that. Then if it's even longer term, this is kind of my ultimate home when it comes to school papers. Okay. So um, again, I keep this in my storage room downstairs. Yeah. So I'm not it's going to, it isn't. Yeah. So when, when they have something here, I'm not going to run down here and file it right away. So that's the stuff that comes over here yeah. till there's enough there or too much there. Yes. And you need to deal with it. So and then, then it goes here, and this is okay. its ultimate. Yeah. So I have, I bought one of each of these for each of the girls, mm -hmm. and they're labeled, and they are sitting on the shelves downstairs. Then what I have in here are hanging files. So I did, I decided to use the legal, yeah. just because there's some bigger legal projects here, right? that they need to bring home. And then I have them labeled, and it starts right here from baby. And then all of the years in here, I've got their school pictures, their envelopes, their report ah, cards go in here but I have a file for each year so they know where to go. Right. Now, the thing is, this can become full quickly, but I always say, like, you know when kids bring pictures home or they create something, right then and there, it's super important, and yeah. they can't bear to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, I'll put it in here. Yeah. 
but then it's teaching them to go back and look through, mm -hmm. and we do that. They love going back and looking through yeah, the files, sure. but they'll go back and look, and if they see something that, oh, well, that wasn't my best work, or oh, I, I like this one much better, then they can prioritize. Okay. They're ready to get rid of it because they're a little more re removed from it. Sure. And then we pare it down, but they know that this is their boundary. Yeah. And so they can't go any, they can't go beyond this. So if they really want to put something in there, they need to weed something else out. And that's a skill mm -hmm. that we need to teach our kids because we can't keep everything. Right. We absolutely right. can't. So. And a bin this size with a lid on mm -hmm. that a mom would hand to any growing child yes. is a reasonable amount. Right? Absolutely. Uh, we see lots of our clients on the seniors move side of things. You know that through the years, a lot of this sort of stuff has been really near and dear to their hearts, but the kids don't necessarily care. So I, I guess there's that part of it too. Maybe some of the things in there are things that you want to keep. Yes. You know because you see them as significant, and I guess some would be for the kids. Yes. That and they chose. And I, I do have my own mementos bin. So if there's some things True. that yeah. I really like that my kids don't really care about but I want to keep it yeah I put it in my momentum okay good and to I know. keep that under my there. underneath my bed yes you use it under the bed bin yes right my husband has one and I have one and so that's right. where we put anything that um, is meaningful to us because really mementos are the things that end up flying around the house because those are the things we know we want to keep but they came into our house not with a designated home right so we right. need to designate the home for them. Right, right. And so then one more quick thing. Can you say just a little bit about, what about something like this for your girls in their own personal space? Do they have any sort of little filing system? Yes. Or how does that work? Yes. Um, my oldest has a drawer in her desk, and so okay. we yeah. set up a mini system for her with hanging files. Again, it was really important that you use hanging files, not just the manila file folders because they'll kind of droop down and it just makes it easy to put away. So my mm -hmm. oldest definitely mm -hmm. does. My middle one doesn't deal with as much paper, so she hasn't really seen it necessary. Where my youngest, mm -hmm. she's kind of the one that wants to be an yeah. author yeah. and writes lots of things and loves paper. So the interesting thing is I have a paper system with my oldest and my youngest, but mm -hmm. not with my middle. Mm -hmm. and, um, and my youngest, she actually has um, a paper box in her bedroom yeah. and we have sat down with her paper and we have designated the different categories and again it doesn't always get there immediately yeah. but she has a holding spot to keep it and then yeah. she can file it. And again it's modeling that right? It is. Yeah. Teaching them that they can figure out the categories and then they, they have the comfort of knowing when they want to find those sheets again they know exactly where they are yeah. and because yeah. they're labeled we've come up I didn't come up with the categories, Selena right. did. Yeah. So yeah. she wrote what those categories were so that it, it's logical for her when she goes to put them Right. Away. And there wouldn't be a right or wrong name. Nope. It's what It's what makes sense to her. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Good. So some good kid-friendly paper strategies for back to school. This is a great time to be thinking about them. We want to hit the ground running in September and uh, getting things set up to work really efficiently in your family. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.